Morning, Kevin. Morning, Hello, everyone. Sean. Um, we had some personal experience with another icon in the bodybuilding, Frank Zayn. When did you actually meet him and what can you tell us about him? Yeah, Frank is considered today one of the greats in bodybuilding. I met Frank for the first time in 1970. He was doing tours through South Africa and was busy getting ready for the Mr. Universe competition that he entered in in 1970. There was a competition down in Port Elizabeth and I was living in my home town of Kumche in the Eastern Cape at the time and I travelled down to Port Elizabeth to take part in the competition um, and Frank Zane was guest posing at the competition. Uh, I met him in the change room before he went on stage to pose. We had a small chat and uh, I have to say my first impression of Frank Zane, I thought he had an incredible physique. Um, it wasn't far, far out of reach of most of us. He wasn't exceptionally big or anything like that, but the shape and uh, the, the, the finish to his physique was really something. Um, well, the, the day after the competition I was asked to come to George Lutz's gym in, in Port Elizabeth because Frank was having a workout. So I went along and uh, I happened to uh, watch him train. Can't remember too much about it. I do remember meeting his wife, Christine, she was there with him and we had a bit of a chat and that was very nice to, to be able to chat to them on a, on a friendly, personal basis and that. And that was the first time I met Frank Zane. Frank, on numerous occasions, was in and out of South Africa for different shows and that. I think that had to be thanks to Reg Park, Frank and he were good friends and Frank and Reg must have brought him out on numerous occasions out to South Africa. Frank was from Moy. Frank, Frank's American and uh, I think originally from Florida which is uh, in South America on the East Coast. It's like a, a holiday province almost like Durban, Natalis to us here in South Africa and uh, he did move in later years to the West Coast to firstly to Santa Monica also like the holiday side of Los Angeles uh, and he, he was living there when I happened to meet him again in later years in America. Okay, and then he started off his Olympia title in 1977. Well, okay, before before 1977, they had the Mr. Olympia in Pretoria, 1975, and uh, it was a huge disappointment for Frank Zane, and probably all those of us who were expecting him to do well. He didn't feature very well. I don't think he entered quite in the shape he should have. He didn't make the winning spot. Franco Colombo won his section. But uh, there's no doubt the potential that he had. That was 1975. Um, in 1977, uh, I went to America to take part in the Mr. International, which was the forerunner of the Mr. Olympia. And Frank won the Mr. Olympia in 1977. The night before, I remember asked to go along and have supper with Boya Co, who featured in the 1977 Mr. Olympia came forth. And Frank Zane was also in that company. We just sat around and had a bit of chat and uh, had something to eat together and that. And that was also a very pleasant experience for me. Uh, 
Frank Zane won the Olympia in 1977 and there was no doubt in my mind that he was the best physique there. And uh, well, in, in 1978, I think Ridge must have brought Frank Zane out to South Africa again, having won the Mr. Olympia in 1977. And he did a tour through South Africa. And I remember going along because I was the reigning South African champion. So I was, I would pose at half time, before half time, and Frank would pose in the evening just before the show ended. And uh, people said to me, mustn't talk to him. He's quite a miserable guy. Don't sit and make conversation with him. Well, we, we I, I think we were in Alberton, and, our, and he was sitting outside the hall, selling his photos, and I don't know what all else he was busy selling, and that at a small table sitting by himself. And I said to him, Frank, would you mind if I came and sat with you? He said, please come and sit, let's chat. And we sat and we had a chat. And it was a lovely chat. There was no bodybuilding, talking bodybuilding. It was a chat about South Africa, America, living standards, all sorts of things other than bodybuilding and that. And we traveled through the country. We went to Clarkstorp. I remember Alberton. I can't remember another. There were three or four different venues. And every time we just sat and would chat and that. And at the end of the tour he gave, it's so the photo there, he gave me this as a gift. These were the posters and that he was selling. And he gave me this as a, as a gift. And uh, he said to me, thanks for keeping me company. It's been really nice being with you. Here's a photo for you. And he went and signed this and gave it to me, which is something I treasure. And you can see here at the bottom we've got his signature. Signature as well. So very nice personal. Well that wasn't the end of the road. <laughs> it wasn't the end of the road. <laughs> In nineteen seventy eight uh Ridge Park did a lot for me. And he organized uh, for me, having won the Mr. South Africa that year, to go to America to take part in the Mr. International and also to have about two or three weeks in Santa Monica training at the World's Gym and Gold's Gym. I, um, I never trained at Gold's Gym, but I did pop in there to, to see the guys and see them training and that. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was kind enough to have paid for my training at World's Gym that two, three weeks. And uh, he also made, he really welcomed me at, 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 to America and made quite a big thing there, which I'm very grateful for. But uh, um, we were all training in World's Gym. Uh, some of them were getting ready for the Olympia. It was. Um, um, Kalman Skalak, I remember very clearly. Uh, at Gold's Gym, I remember Robbie Robinson, Danny Padilla. Uh, I remember training at World's Gym with Tom Platts. Tom Platts was nothing in bodybuilding in those years, was still on his way up. Uh, and we befriended each other. Um, and when I walked into the gym, Frank Zane was in there. And he walked straight up to me, which was so nice. He said, Kevin, welcome to America. And uh, I thought that was so nice of him. So anyway, he was training in the gym and all these great champions in that training. And he said to me, please, if, I, if you don't mind, will you stand by me? He says, these other chaps don't want to help me with my training. Uh, obviously, they're a little bit jealous of him having already won the Mr. Olympia. So I had to help him a bit with his training and stand by him with certain pieces of equipment and that too, which I, of course I did do.
with, uh, I suppose, happiness. I suppose. <laughs> you don't get that every day. But anyway, that was the story in 1978. And he went again. And he won the Mr. Olympia again. He was, uh, in those weeks and months running up to the Olympia, Joe Weider was promoting Robbie Robinson as the next Mr. Olympia and that no one was going to beat him and he was great and I saw him in the change room the, just before going, before they warmed up to go on for the Olympia and I must be uh, honest, I was quite surprised he was incredible. Uh, through his tracksuit, this physique he had just seemed to pop out. And then when they walked out on stage and I saw Frank Zane standing next to Robbie Robinson and I said, well, that's a competition finished. No way was Robbie Robinson going to beat Frank Zane. The Polish, the Finnish. Although Frank Zane was a very small man, only about 190 pounds, but the structure and the small hips, the small waist, the, the shape of the thighs, the, the calves, everything, the, the lats, all that, uh, 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 Robbie Robinson couldn't match him that, that day. And that was probably the last time I met Frank Zane in person. Um, he, he did come back in 1979 and he won the Mr. Olympia and I saw photos of it because I wasn't at the competition and uh, he came, uh, he, he beat Fra uh, Mike Mensa, yeah, Mike we spoke about last week, having come second to him. But in all honesty, when you see the two of them standing next to each other and the polish of Frank Zane, one has to, in all honesty, admit he, he, he had the edge on, on Mike there. That was it. Um, Frank is still around today. He's about 80 years of age. He is just turned 80. Um, you have a photo of him at 64 where he looked really good at 64. <laughs> and uh, something I find amusing today, he's in a, a blues band. He and a couple of his friends make blues music together and that and, and I've heard a bit of his music and that and it's very nice. <laughs> very sad. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, no, maybe in 10 years time when I'm about 90 years of age, I, I can also play the lead guitar of some of our Jimi Hendrix's remakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it, sure. Thanks for the, the great personal story there, Kevin, and then uh, till next time. We'll just think, think muscles. muscles. Yeah.